Hi everyone, welcome to Mains Maxima program. So the aim of this Mains Maxima program is to help the UPSC aspirants who are preparing for their Mains examinations to maximize their marks with reference to your uh, Mains answer writing. So now in this video, we'll be discussing a set of questions exclusively on the topic NPA that is not performing assets. So if you see the recent years, you know, say three years uh, economic survey, we can see that this particular topic called NPA is on the focus, right? So we can expect a question from this particular area for your UPSC mains examinations. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the on the topic non performing aspects in different perspective. So to begin with, the first question is in the light of rising problem of NPA that is non performing assets, the bank recapitalization has to be complemented with banking sector reforms. Discuss. So here the key word is discuss. So which means that you have to give an elaborate explanation with respect to this particular question. So here you have two things, which is one is non-performing assets and one is bank recapitalization. So let me tell you what is non-performing assets and bank recapitalization in one or two lines, guys. See, an, an asset is said to be non-performing when a loan or advance which has been taken is not repaid back. Okay, for a say for a specified period of uh, 90 days. When even when you're not able to repay that particular loan or advance, that particular asset turns out turned out to be what a non-performing asset in simple terms. And now talking about bank recapitalization is in case of public sector banks, recapitalization is an injection of capital, uh, say like through equity investments by the government. Why? In order to financially strengthen them. Okay. So now keeping in mind this particular question, you can start your answer by giving a definition about non-performing assets. A non-performing asset to NPA, it is defined as a credit facility in respect of which the interest and or the installment of bond finance principle has remained past due for a specified period of time. That is what I said before, say for a period of 90 days. When that is the case, when you're not able to repay it back, then that is called as a non-performing asset and which is very, very bad for the functioning of the banks, especially the public sector banks. So in our question, keeping in point the non-performing assets and we are telling that it is not only bank recapitalization which can be done to overcome this problem. We need to focus more on the ba existing banking sector reforms what we have so that this particular problem of NPA can be overcome to a greater extent. So now keeping that in mind, the next point what you can write is this non-performing assets that has literally or you know massively dented the net worth of India's public sector banks and that needs an urgent redressal. But what happens? The autonomous and continuous recapitalization. See, when there is an NPA, the next thing the government does is what? Or we think is what? Recapitalization. Just, you know, you know injecting capital uh, through, uh, you know, equity investments, etc. Just to financially strengthen them. So when that is done, it what happens? It generates several forms of perverse incentive. So you can even mention about that also. And the next point is, if you see in the past, okay, the bankers, they have become overly aggressive and also, uh, you know, not that serious towards the debt recovery. Okay. And what happened as a result of which it tend to escalate the provisions and contingencies which need to be adjusted against the fresh capital. And the next point which you can mention in this particular question is, see, further in different banks, same pay. Okay. In such kind of situations, what happens? The employees in the loss making, but they are literally recapitalized. But the banks then become unenthusiastic guys, while those who are in the profit making side, what happens to them? They are not recapitalized, but still they suffer a heartburn. This is what literally happens. Why we are uh, mentioning this point is to show the real thing. So when the, the problem of NPA is there, but in spite of recapitalization also, there's still, no, the problem still continues. So now what can be done for this? That is what we have to write in our answer. The next point is it also implies cross subsidization, which means that see the dividend paying public sector banks subsidizing the non dividend pay and ultimately what happens the systematic efficiency suffers. There will not be a proper efficiency in your entire functioning of the system. So that again is a problem, right? So now after this, you can directly mention about the major banking sector reforms. Okay. So the first point in that case is consolidation, which means that see, India still need public sector banks, but not so many. Now, the banking structure, which was outlined by, you know, the Narasimha Committee 1, which consisted of three or four, uh, four large international banks. Then second point is the eight to ten national banks. Then third point, it spoke about the regional banks. And fourth point about the rural banks, which literally holds a relevance for any fresh endeavor. So you can mention about this also. And then if you see that, 
going forward if some public sector banks cannot mobilize the required resources you know for their profitable growth then what they should do literally guys they should either pri privatize or merge themselves with certain large or big banks in rather than continuing as zombies that is the only solution in which you can increase the efficiency of these public sector banks and avoid the problem of NPA that is non performing assets. So, if you mention, you have to mention this particular line in order to make them understand that this is a way in which we can find a solution. Okay. And the next point is autonomy for banks. That is, see, for a durable remedy with respect to your non performing assets, the public sector banks that must be given adequate functional autonomy and also there should be a flexibility with reference to its operation that is your operational flexibility so now while eliminating the dwill effect that is the double control uh, double control it is difficult to come by whereas at the same time certain bureaucratic and also political interference that should be literally minimized guys in that case definitely the bank will have some sort of autonomy and now that is yet again another important reforms that we have discussed so the next point you can mention about you know the HR management, the modern HR management. That is, see the approach of this public sector banks, okay, towards the entire HR process that needs to be you know given special attention and it should be made bank specific. Because though we have a lot of you know uh, uh, we have an efficient HR management also, it is not up to the mark. So now that is uh, that is a reason why we are facing all these problems with reference to your NPA, right? So now if the public sector banks approach towards these HR management is, you know, very bank specific, then the desired results can be achieved. And also we can reduce the problem of NPA to a greater extent. And for that, certain motivational aspects like your variable pay, employee stock ownership plan, that is your ESOP, etc. That's need to be introduced. Along with that, guys, you can also talk about the reskilling the existing staff, okay? Reskilling the existing staff, how along with direct recruitment of specialists, that is an expert panel that is needed to address this particular talent issue, especially in domains like your forex, treasury, IT, research and uh, data, and also your HR. Through this, you'll be able to strengthen your entire efficiency to a greater extent with reference to your public sector banks. Okay, apart from your recap, only uh, apart from recapitalization. So now we know that uh, digitalization has become a very common thing for our country now and we are focusing more on a digital economy. So now the digitalization of the payment system that is literally inescapable. But if you look at the public sector banks, only a very handful or a few number of public sector banks, they are truly active with reference to your national electronic fund transfer that is a NEFT and then with reference to your point of sale that is POS ownership and also the card transaction space. That is the reality guys, that should literally change. So when that is changing, only all these issues with reference to NPA again can be overcome. Apart from recap bank recapitalization, if you're focusing on all these uh, digitalization challenge, which comes under your banking sector reforms, we can find a solution to this problem of rising problem of NPA. Okay. So now, what are the considerations for this uh, public sector banks, guys? It includes first one is the cost of acquisition, then and also the maintenance of this systems. Next is with reference to the scale, their scalability. Then the uh, then the adaptability of them that is which is very you know difficult for them to adapt to certain situations and also another consideration for this public sector banks is their cyber security and also the resilience against technological obsolescence. So these are the major considerations for public sector banks. That also you can mention under your point that is digitalization challenge. That is the reason you're not able to digitalize to the mark to the extent what it is supposed to be digitalized, right? So with this you can uh, you know with these points you can efficiently put you can put forward these points in a very efficient manner and after that you can conclude your answer by saying that recapitalization is not the only solution guys apart from that if you're able to strengthen the existing banking reforms keeping in view the problem of NPA then definitely you know you'll be able to avoid that or reduce this particular problem of NPA to greater extent so thus you can conclude your answer by writing recapitalization alone cannot be the panacea. It is extremely crucial that the banking reforms are properly sequenced and executed in the proper time. And that is very, very important because timely execution of these banking sector reforms, there lies the real solution, guys, because immediately a problem happens. Just recapitalization of, you know, funds to the bank. That is not the only solution. Why do we have these banking sector reforms? Focus on that. Make sure that uh, apart from implementation, the execution is also considered or done in the proper time. So thus, certainly the need of the R is what? Another high-powered committee. You can conclude your answer like this. And I hope you've clearly understood this question number one with reference to your uh, non-performing assets and uh, bank recapitalization, which has to be complemented with the banking sector reforms. So the next question is, 
examine the genesis of NPA that is non-performing asset problem and its implications in the country. So this question is asking us to give a complete or a holistic picture regarding the origin of the problem of non-performing assets and also what are the that is the reasons in simple terms what are the reasons for this non-performing assets problem okay and also as a result of this what are its implications in the country so to begin this answer guys again you can give an introduction about what is NPA in one two lines and we've already discussed about that in the previous question so that is NPA or your non-performing assets they are loans or advances which are in defaults that is when you're unable to pay it back uh, for us usually for a period of say 90 days the same thing again you can write here also and now when uh, you are not able to pay this for a period of 90 days that is called as non-performing assets fine now before the period of 90 days what are these called as these long loans or advances guys they're called as stressed assets that is before this period of 90 days when you're unable to you know pay it then that they are called as stressed assets okay you can just mention that point also along with your uh, NPA definition and now directly you can move towards the reasons uh, for this non-performing assets okay where does the problem lies so now the reasons of NP we're going to uh, we are going to discuss in points the first reason being you yeah, the slowdown of GDP that is the gross domestic product is literally been slowed down so now if you see between the early 2000s and 2008 in, uh, in Indian economy they, that was literally in a boom phase guys so now during this period what happened to the banks when the economy was in a boom, boom period what happened to the banks guys the banks especially the public sector banks that lent extensively to corporates because they wanted the you know since the economy was uh, in a boom period they wanted the corporates to expand the uh, business and the public sector banks literally they extended a you know friendly hand towards these corporates so now again what happens guys however the profits of most of these corporates that dwindled due to so many reasons what are they one is due to the slowdown in the global and domestic economy next one is when there were certain bans in uh, you know uh, mining projects then other reason was the delays in environmental related permits then another reason could was uh, you know the land acquisition hurdles and also the volatility that existed in the prices of raw materials due to all these reasons what happens the profits of most of these corporates literally fell down or you can tell that dwindled okay it crashed i can tell you that now as a result of this what happens this has adversely affected the ability of these corporates to pay back their loans because uh, during the period as i told you before during that period of boom the public sector bank was so interested in uh, you know lending uh, so much of money to these corporates but when the corporates are not able to perform well in their you know business what happens definitely they'll not be able to repay back the loan right so you have to mention that point also so now when they are uh, you know not able to pay back the loans and now what happens to your npa Yes, and that is literally one of the most important reasons behind the rise in your not performing assets. Again, see, NPA is what? You know, when you're unable to pay back the uh, dues or loans or advances which you have taken. So now, with reference to corporates, you can understand that corporates don't go for a, you know, normal, a smaller amount, right? They go for a very huge amount. So when that huge amount is not being able to be repaid means that results in the right, uh, creation of NPA, that is not performing assets. So it's very, very bad for your economy as a whole, especially for the public sector banks which has given the loans or advances so that is the first important point that you can write that was the first important reason for the rise of your NP that is non-performing assets the next point what you can mention is about the relaxed lending norms which is see another important reason for the rising non-performing assets or NPA was the relaxed lending norms guys especially for the corporate people see when the financial status and also the credit rating was not analyzed properly that is true because without even taking into consideration what is the real credit facility or the financial stability of these credit big big corporates the banks started lending them uh, or that to lending at a very relaxed in a very relaxed way the norms were so flexible for them as a result of which again what happened they were unable to repay back all these loans again there was a creation of NPA right that is again bad for whom the economy as a whole so now Again, to face competitions, the banks were hugely selling unsecured loans. All these things have literally led to the rise of NPA. That is the next point that you can talk about. The priority sector lending. See, that is very, very important, guys. Because if you see, even in case of this uh, priority sector lending, that is not a main cause. But still, it has contributed to be one of the you know reasons for the rise in NPA. The reason is because when you take the latest estimates, which is given by the SBI, the State Bank of India, you can see that the education loans that literally constituted 20% of its NPAs. Which means that, see, the NPAs in the corporate sector, they are far higher than those in the priority or agriculture sector. 
we know that agriculture sector that is very very important and that is a backbone of our economy more of loan is to be given to, to support the upcoming of that particular sector but that has not been done apart from that they are focusing on several other sectors as a result of which again the pri priority changes when the priority changes again what happens it is affecting the entire economy and as i told you though the uh, psl that is priority sector lending is not a major reason for the rise in npo also it has literally guys contributed to you uh, know one of the reasons for this npa to increase so you can even mention that particular point also okay the governance issue guys there's is a lot of issues with reference to governance of your bank management let me tell you what they are the governance issues in banks manage bank management like the lack of bankruptcy code in india and also the sluggish legal system which we have that literally makes it difficult for the banks to recover those loans from both the corporate as well as the from non corporate people when that is a situation what happens again the npa is on the rise because the governance is not efficient though uh, you know we have a lot of rules regulations they put forward a lot of things also there is still inefficiency which exists in the governance and also i told you about the sluggish legal system because of that literally it is difficult for the banks to recover these you know loans again what happens to npa it is on the rise so these are some of the reasons which have literally led to a rise of npa to a greater extent i can tell you so now another reason which you can write here is about evergreening of loans which means that see the restructuring of loans in order to extend the repayment times in hopes of projects becoming viable when that is the situation again what happens guys again more and more of fund has been released as a result of which they are unable to repay it back your npa is on the rise and finally the non coordination banking system that is very true because if the bank system was coordinated in a proper way then the system would have been efficient each and every department would have been very careful there would have been expert committee you know for uh, looking after all these uh, you know loans and advances whether they are repaid back properly to whom to give whom not to give when you are giving to a corporate also you would have analyzed the uh, you know credit uh, ability or what is the financial status of that particular person all these things taken into consideration only you will give the uh, give the loans and advances right but when that is not been done again what happens it leads to rise in npa so you can even mention about this no, non coordination banking system okay the problem of npa guys in the banking system is one of the four, four most and most formidable problems that has literally impacted the entire banking system so now we have discussed the reasons as to which have led to rise in npa we have discussed the major reasons also and also certain the reasons which have been uh, though they are not a priority reasons also they have also contributed to this npa in one or the other way so all those points you can include and now the second part of the question talks about what what are the implications of this in the economy so now we are going to talk about the implications of this particular uh, problem of rising npa okay so thus higher npa leads to following adverse effect on economy that we know because when the npa is too high it lead to a bad or a negative effect on indian economy so you can uh, list out certain points how it is affecting different sectors so if you take the case of depositors okay literally it has affected them in a very bad way why because these depositors guys they don't get their rightful returns and many a times if you see they may lose their uninsured deposits so who is at a loss the depositors are at a loss and in some situations guys this banks they may even be begin to charge very high rate of interest on some products in order to compensate this non performing loan that is the losses that you have incurred from this non performing loans what do they do they start charging high rate of interest on some certain products so that again is uh, you know a disadvantage right it is affecting our economy in a bad way so that is the first point that you can write under the impact or the implications of this non performing assets with reference to indian economy how badly it has affected moving on to the next point we can talk about the bank shareholders literally they are also been affected very badly you can even mention that point also see the bank loans they imply a redirecting of funds from good projects to bad ones that is also happening guys hence what happens the economy suffers loss due to the loss of lot of good projects and also the failure of bad investments when you are investing on a very good projects suddenly again that fund will be re redirected from good projects to bad ones as a result of which again we are not able to avail the facilities of certain uh, you know certain certain big projects because again uh, why again the this bad loans guys that literally is uh, you know not been used in the most efficient way because from good ones when it's going to bad ones what happen again the loss of good projects and failure of bad investments take place as a result of which the economy suffers you can even mention that point also and then see when the bank do not get loan repayment or you know when they are not able to recover back even the interest payment also a problem called liquidity arises that is liquidity problems may arise that is again bad for the entire banking system right 
So with this, we have winded up this answer, guys. You can give a conclusion as to, though this is the problem of NPA, we have listed out the reasons for the rise of NPA and we have also listed out the you know, economic implications, that is how badly or how adversely it is affecting the Indian economy. You can, after writing that, you can even mention, conclude it by saying that, all the major sector reforms, again, what we've discussed in the first answer with reference to the banking sector reforms, that should be effectively and uh, implemented. At the same time, along with recapitalization, all the other factors are to be taken into consideration. You can just conclude by putting in all those point, uh, points, the answer will be, you know, a bit better. But more focus should be on to the reasons and also the economic implications that it has on the economy. And always the implication is what, guys? negative if the NPA is on the rise because always higher non-performing assets will definitely have a very bad or adverse effect on your economy that all of us know right so you need to you know uh, write about that and if you want you can even mention uh, you know two three uh, suggestions or uh, what what could be done in order to overcome this problem in this particular answer you can even do that okay so the next question is the scale of NPA problem at PSU banks is much larger than was anticipated and the downturn in the Indian economy has also made the need for corrective measures more urgent. Evaluate the measures taken to resolve the NPA. So this question we are going to discuss about the certain remedial measures that can be taken in order to reduce the pricing problem of non-performing assets in our economy. So already we have discussed uh, with reference to the, re, uh, you know, the recapitalization and bank sector reforms keeping in view the NPA problem. We have discussed the reasons as to you know why why this NPA has originated and its implications on economy. And now it's time for us to discuss the remedies. What can really be done to solve this particular problem of non-performing assets? So this answer is exclusively on the remedies or solutions to reduce your non-performing assets. So to begin with, you can give a uh, statistics, okay, as to to show that there's a proportion of NPA in your public sector banks, your private sector banks, and also with reference to corporate donations, okay. So the, if you see the proportion of non-performing assets in public sector banks, it is rupees 7.34 lakh crore by the end of 2017. And what about the private sector banks, guys? It is only rupees 1.03 lakh crores. And if you see the corporate house, leading corporate houses and also the companies, they accounted for approximately, say, like 77% of the total gross NPA from domestic operations for the banks. So you from this already understand. From the public sector uh, banks, the NPA, the proportion of NPA is on the rise. So now, what can be done for this, guys? That is, the, that is what your question asks you, right? So now, the first point could be recognition, which means that, see, the banks must literally value their assets accurately as far as possible. And in that, in that case, there will be a progress, guys. That is, the RBI, that is your Reserve Bank of India's Asset Quality Review, has revealed that the gross non-performing asset, that is NPA ratio, of both your public as well as your private sector banks is literally higher than with that was earlier. Okay, that is that, that, that the earlier thought. But what happens to your PSU, guys, that, you, uh, that is your public sector undertaking banks, it is alarming at about 12%. And that is literally another important reason, you know, for the rise in NPA. So for that, literally, the banks must realize the value of their assets. A kind of recognition should be there as far as possible. Only then you can expect, accept a progress there in reduction of NPA with reference to your public sector undertaking banks. Okay. So that is one point that you can uh, mention as a remedy. Moving on to the next point, we have resolution of problems, problem loans. That is C. The underlying stressed assets, uh, stressed assets I told you before the period of 90 uh, days, that particular loans or advances will be called as stressed assets in the first answer I've mentioned. So now, this underlying stressed assets in the corporate sector, that must be either sold, guys, or they should be rehabilitated, okay? And now, the insolvency and the bankruptcy code, that is the IBC, that is literally considered as a major reform, and this process will certainly clean up the books of the banks over the coming years or so, but it will also mean what, guys? An acceptance of large losses and a corresponding depletion of capital. So that is yet again, you know, another way in which you can find a solution to this pro problem of loans, guys. We're doing like this to some extent. Again, you can bring down your NPA. This is yet again another important point that you can mention. The next point that you can mention here is recapitalization. Of course, recapitalization is something, you know, which we really uh, do it also. But that because of more of recapitalization, ignorance of your bank sector reforms only, again, your NP was on the rise. Okay, I have told you what is recapitalization. It is nothing but an injection of capital, uh, you know, by, uh, through equity investments by the government just to financially strengthen them. So now that can also be another solution or remedy for your, you know, uh, for decreasing the NP in the economy. So now, the bank's capital position, that must be safeguarded via infusions of equity. 
if you take the budgetary expenditure that is clearly insufficient guys why because the NPA situation that has turned out to be so much worse than what we literally expect in reality it is too bad okay in spite of recapitalization also so now the scope for using such public funds to recapitalize the public sector undertaking banks can only be just on the basis of what guys a holistic or a complete view of many other demands for your government expenditure so this recapitalization can also be taken into consideration as one of the solutions for NPA but not complete solution that is also there because that is what I discussed in the first question because recapitalization cannot be the only solution for you know uh, reducing the problem of NPA that can be just one solution apart from the other solutions what you have and the next point that you can mention is the reforms that is the future incentives for the private sector and also the corporates guys that must be set right why so as to avoid a repetition of this particular problem what problem that is your NPA because if reforms are not done in the proper way definitely this problem of non-performing assets will be continuous and that will repeat also for even for your private sectors and also for the corporates okay and now this reforms which literally it should improve the governance in the bank that reform means what there should be some changes but what sort of changes that is a question so now the reform should be with reference to, uh, with regard to the improvement in the governance in the bank management then upgrading the skill set of banking personnel and also improving the quality of risk assessment within the public sector undertaking bank focusing on all these things that should be the reform guys because reform means we already have a lot of bank sector reforms right but how well we are specialized or how well we are focused that matters a lot so when you're talking about the solutions of NPA these are some of the most important points that you can mention and finally you can conclude your answer by saying that resolution of bad loans and also restoring of uh, restoring the health of public sector banks is amongst the biggest challenge of the economy that what we are facing today right and that requires a response on multiple fronts it is not only on one particular solution on multiple or diverse aspects we have to think about this particular solution so with this we have come to the uh, you know end of this particular video and we've discussed exclusively on non-performing assets from different perspective we have seen uh, in the in view of non-performing assets with reference to bank recapitalization and also your bank sector reforms the next the second question we have dealt with the reasons which is uh, you know which is responsible exclusively for the rise of NPA and its implication in the economy and the third question is because of this what solutions or remedies that we can take because that is very important guys to reduce this problem of NPA so you can expect a question from any of these aspects for UPC means examinations and I hope this mains maxima program has literally helped you out in preparing the topic of NPA in a better way thank you